In this video, I'll be talking about the absorption of the fat-soluble vitamins, and so that's vitamins A, E, K, and D. And so the reason I'll be talking about these all together is because they are all absorbed in the same way, which kind of makes sense because they are all insoluble in water, and they will be taken up into fat droplets and into fat emulsifications in my cells. And so they're all going to be kind of delivered to the intestinal brush border in sort of the same way. And so we can actually see that if we look at the structures of these. So here I have the the structures of vitamin A, of the various uh, carotenes here, which are the vitamin A with beta carotene being kind of the primary one that everybody knows about. And so we can see that these are all just uh, hydrocarbon chains, essentially. Uh, and so if we look at the vitamin E, they are also mostly just hydrocarbon chains. So they are very uh, insoluble in water. They're very hydrophobic. And so the same thing with vitamin K. So these are the various forms of vitamin K. Those are also uh, fat soluble and insoluble in water and same for vitamin D which is slightly different in structure uh, but it's still uh, it's still just these hydrocarbon chains with uh, you know very limited polar functional groups here uh, and so these are all taken in in the same way these are all absorbed in the same way uh, I'll be kind of following mostly vitamin A here, but uh, we can sort of just, you know, assume that what I say for vitamin A is also the case for vitamin E, K, and D. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is sort of what happens to vitamin A uh, as it is digested. And, you know, like I said, there there's very similar things going on for the other three vitamins. All right, so these uh, are taken up into lipid droplets in the stomach here. So in the stomach phase of digestion, we uh, it says that there is a low amount of this trans-cis isomerization. So we see this is all trans, so they're all these trans double bonds here, but there might be some uh, isomerization to cis uh, double bonds. So the distribution, they're, they go into lipid droplets, uh, and they, this paper says they might influence gastric lipase. And so one other thing we'll notice all throughout this is there is a lot of there are a lot of question marks for this. So the uptake of these fat soluble vitamins is not really that well understood. Uh, you know, even. To even to today, they're not that well understood. Uh, so there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of it may be done this way or that way and so on. All right, and so in this paper, it says so through micellization. So that's uh, generating these micelles. And so those are things that look like this. So a micell, so it has this uh, sort of coating of hydrophilic here, uh, usually from phospholipids, and then the inside is the hydrophobic part here, uh, which is different from a liposome, which is uh, sort of like a small vesicle here where we have this uh, phospholipid bilayer that looks kind of like this, but it forms a, a sphere like this. And so this happens because uh, if we have these phospholipids, they have these hydrophilic heads here with the hydrophobic tails that want to sort of point inward. Uh, and so that is what is going on here with the fats from our diet. All right, so the we have the micellization of the cis isomers is higher than the all transforms, uh, but it appears that the, the all transform is actually taken in, so absorbed by the enterocytes uh, better. All right, so the beta carotene absorption was uh, once thought to be done by passive diffusion, so just diffusing across the membrane. But now they uh, suspect that these uh, scavenger receptor class B type 1 or SRB1 in this uh, CD36 are actually involved in the uptake of the uh, 
of the fat soluble vitamins and so we I'll actually be looking at structures of these well there isn't a structure for the SRB one but there is a homologous one called LIMP2 that we'll be looking at uh, but anyway so th these two uh, these two receptors here are thought to be involved in taking in the fat soluble uh, the fat soluble vitamins uh, and so recent studies uh, also suggest that the CD36 may be indirectly modulating the uh, apical to intracellular influx of beta carotene by uh, modulating the synthesis rate of chylomicrons. And chylomicrons are something I'll be talking about a bit more in uh, when I talk about lipid absorption. But they're essentially these extremely low density lipoproteins in the blood uh, so you may have heard of HDL the good cholesterol which is high density lipoprotein and LDL which is the low density lipoprotein and is often called the the bad cholesterol well chylomicrons are sort of the very very low density lipoproteins uh, that enter the blood right from the gastrointestinal tract uh, and those will be sort of reduced down to to VLDLs and LDLs in the blood but when it's sort of first enters the blood from the enterocytes it's in these chylomicrons uh, so those are just uh, lipoproteins so very very low density lipoproteins and so this is saying that CD36 might indirectly modulate uh, the synthesis uh, rate of the chylomicrons and so uh, a recent study uh, a recent gene association study suggests that this ABCG5 which is called uh, sterilin 1 and it's uh, it's heterodimer here with G8 which is called a sterilin which is a cholesterol a cholesterol exporter uh, could be involved in the efflux of a fraction of the beta carotene in, uh, back into the intestinal lumen uh, so it is not clear to which extent this uh, NPC1L1 is involved in that and so we can actually look at that down here uh, yeah so if we continue on this we have the intestinal uptake and so this is uh, talking about this SRB1 the CD36 uh, and possibly this NPC1L1 uh, that I mentioned before and so these are uh, two uh, pretty much the same figures here that I got for vitamin A uptake. Uh, and once again, this is showing this SRB1, the CD36, possibly this NPC1L1. Uh, and so then there are these binding proteins which might be transporting these through the cell because, like I said, these are, are hydrophobic molecules and they're not actually soluble in water and so they need to be transported through the the water solvent of the cell uh, down to the basal lateral membrane where then they can be uh, put into these chylomicrons here uh, which this says is bound to this apolipoprotein B. And so these apolipoproteins, again, I'll talk a bit more about those when I get to uh, the absorption of lipids and the transport of lipids through the blood, but these apolipoproteins are what uh, sort of carry the, the, uh, the chylomicrons and the LDLs and HDLs around the blood uh, and so yeah this is sort of the structure of a chylomicron so it's this uh, it's this droplet essentially that it has a lot of fats so it has this phospholipid layer around the outside and then the inside is full of a lot of different lipids and uh, hydrophobic molecules such as cholesterol and these fat soluble vitamins uh, so this is just another another image here but I just wanted to sort of 
I liked this part of the image. So it's just showing that the triglyceride uh, amount is is the highest amount here. Uh, then there is cholesterol and phospholipid, and the protein is is very is a very small amount here. Uh, and so the the fat soluble vitamins are probably also quite small compared to things like the triglyceride here. Uh, but these are the the uh, lipoprotein complexes here that uh, are transported through the blood. And so I also wanted to show these. So these are essentially the same figure, but for the vitamin E, vitamin D, uh, then the vitamin K one is a little bit different. But the things we can see here that are the same, we have the SRB1, the CD36, so that's the same for the vitamin E. It's the same for the vitamin D here, the possibility of this NPC1L1 here for both of those. Uh, they are both then taken up into these chylomicrons here, just like with the vitamin A. Uh, I couldn't find a sort of similar figure for vitamin K, but we can look at this one and we see once again our our usual suspects, the SRB1, the CD36, the NPC1L1, uh, then those are sort of taken into the blood uh, through the chylomicrons. And so, like I said, these are all taken in in uh, pretty much the same way here. Uh, and we can see here, especially on this figure on the left, which even though it, it doesn't look very good, it looks uh, very messy. It's actually from a newer paper than this one here on the right. And this one has, you know, all these, these question marks going on here. So we have these question marks here about uh, how these are actually sort of transported through the cell. All right, so we can look at the uh, at these these receptors on the apical membrane, the structures of them, and so I actually have this here. So uh, if we remove that, so this is actually a receptor called the LIMP2, which is a a homolog of the SRB1. In fact, it's often called SRB2, uh, uh, and so what's different about it is that it's actually um, it's actually uh, on the surfaces here of the the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and so forth, rather than on the apical membrane, but it functions pretty much exactly the same. And so what we can see here, so in orange here is actually a phospholipid. So this is actually a phospholipid bound into here. And we can look up here at what I have in yellow. That is actually a cholesterol bound into there. And this stuff in gray are uh, are glycosylations. So this is a glycosylated uh, protein here. Uh, so yeah, these are taking this into the, well, in this one, it's into the endoplasmic reticulum. But we can think of it the same way as uh, as for the SRB1 as taking it in from the intestinal lumen into the uh, the enterocyte. Uh, and so I actually have here, we can see in purple, these are some of the uh, binding, the binding residues here uh, in purple. And so we see like this lysine here is binding to this sort of uh, hydrophilic functional group. It looks like an ester group there uh, on the phospholipid. Uh, yeah, and so these are uh, how the those substrates bind into there. And so this other protein I have here, which we can see overlaps quite a bit. Uh, we see uh, here in magenta, there's a lot of overlap there with the with the uh, the LIMP2, and this in magenta is actually the CD36. Uh, and so if we sort of uh, if we sort of remove everything from the LIMP2, then we can add back in the ligands here. Oops. So I've added them back in manually here. But we can see uh, this in orange here. That is the phospholipid there. And we can see that bound into the CD36. Same here in the yellow. We can see uh, that is the 
uh, cholesterol there can also bind into that CD36. Uh, but so, yeah, the interesting thing to see here, uh, too, is just that there is a lot of overlap. So they are structurally homologous, the CD36 and this LIMP2. Uh, so the SRB1, I couldn't, there, there didn't actually seem to be a structure for that one specifically, but it is uh, homologous. It uh, has a lot of sequence homology, a lot of sequence identity with the LIMP2. So it sort of stands to reason that it would also have a structurally homologous, uh, a structurally homologous, well, a homologous structure, I guess. Uh, so I think there was actually like an NMR structure of, of part of the SRB1. Uh, but yeah, like I said, there isn't a structure available for the SRB1 specifically. Uh, but we can see how the SRB1 and the CD36 uh, and the LIMP2 are are behaving very, uh, very homologously, very similarly. All right, so this sort of confusing looking thing is just looking at beta carotene bioactivation. Uh, and so uh, probably the main thing to notice here, so we have food and then following this sort of thick green line here, we have the all trans beta carotene here. Then we have these BCO2 here. Uh, there is also BCO1. So that's what we have right here, which uh, cleaves it in half here. So the BCO1 and possibly the BCO2 is cleaving it in half, but we can have these, uh, these sort of, uh, these sort of, strange uh, cleavages going on with the BCO2 here where it's not sort of just completely in half uh, where we get these different sizes here going on uh, and so yeah they call it ex eccentric uh, cleavage metabolism there uh, but we can just sort of follow what this says over here so after having crossed the apical membrane so now we're inside the cell inside the enterocyte so the beta carotene must cross the polarized intestinal cell uh, so like this as little is known about it uh, but since it's insoluble in water there must be intracellular proteins that are involved and so this is saying that uh, one of the proteins could this be this BCO1 which is in the cytosol uh, from the of enterocytes from the jejunum. Uh, so it is the main enzyme cleaving the beta carotene in half. So it has great affinity for the beta carotene. Uh, so an intracellular beta carotene transport could also be this fatty acid binding protein, this FABP. Uh, more likely the liver FABP here, which is also present in the intestine and displays a high affinity for the hydrophobic ligands. Uh, so it's also important to emphasize that only a fraction of the absorbed beta carotene is metabolized in the enterocyte. So they mean like cleaved in half or uh, having those eccentric cleavages going on in the enterocyte. So an estimated 70% uh, uh, it likely depends on the vitamin A status of the body. Uh, so the secretion mechanism of beta carotene at the basolateral side, so from the enterocyte into the blood, uh, likely depends on the centric cleavage by BCO1 producing the retinal uh, and following conversion to retinol, uh, mainly re-esterified by the lecithin retinal acyl transfer transferase, the LRAT, which I have kind of boxed right here. So that's going to the all trans retinol. So it's assumed that the parent molecule, so the uncleaved molecule, is incorporated into these chylomicrons while the less apolar beta carotene metabolites. So it's saying that when we, when we, uh, uh, cleave it into like, like this retinal, for instance, we end up with this hydrophilic part right here. And so it is less, uh, it is less apolar, it is less hydrophobic. Uh, so the less apolar beta carotene metabolites produced by the eccentric cleavage are secreted into the portal blood. So it's saying that those might actually be 
uh, hydrophilic and then would not have to be in the uh, in the chylomicrons. All right, so I'm going to kind of move down here. So the mechanisms responsible for incorporation of beta carotene and chylomicrons are poorly understood. Uh, it's hypothesized that they involve the enzymes in the, the apoproteins uh, for the assembly of chylomicrons. Uh, so like microsomal triacylglycerol transfer protein, so this MTP, APOA4, and secretion-associated uh, SR. ASAR1B and APOB48. Uh, so once again, these APO, these APO uh, proteins here, I'll talk quite a bit more about those when I get to the lipid absorption and the lipid, uh, the lipid um, movement of lipids throughout the blood. So the the transport of lipids throughout the blood, which is done through, like I said, the LDLs, the low-density lipoproteins, and HDLs, the high-density lipoproteins, and things like that. So a recent study also suggested that the protein involved in intestinal HDL secretion, this ABCA1, may be involved in beta-carotene secretion into intestinal HDL. Uh, so yeah, over here I just have this uh, this cleavage in the center here of the the beta carotene, which then produces this transretinal, which has this aldehyde group right here, uh, which is then uh, turned into this transretinol, which has uh, this this uh, hydroxyl group there, this alcohol group there. And so the last thing I wanted to sort of show here. Uh, is this, which is just looking at sort of the postprandial, the after eating serum levels of these, of some of these, these vitamins here in the blood. So we have the tocopherol, that's vitamin E. Uh, we have the retinol and the beta carotene, which are both vitamin A's. But we also have the vitamin C here, which I'm not going to get too into. But this uh, in squares, that's the Mediterranean diet. This in circles is the Western diet high in fat. And this in triangles is the Western diet high in carbohydrates. Uh, and so we see that the with the fat soluble vitamins in particular, there doesn't seem to be that much change in the serum levels of those after any of these diets. The the vitamin C is a little bit of a different story here, but the the fat soluble vitamins doesn't seem to change uh, that much. Uh, so at zero, that would be sort of pre meal. Then there's one, two three, four, and five hours post-meal here. So there doesn't seem to be that much, there doesn't seem to be a statistically significant change in blood levels of those vitamins following these particular diets. Uh, but anyway, um, I think that's where I'm going to end this video. I think sort of the, the take-home message for this one is that when we eat these fat-soluble vitamins, uh, they get brought into these lipid droplets, which are then emulsified uh, in the small intestine by bio salts and phospholipids and things like that. So that's when we end up generating these micelles. So the micelles are what we get after the emulsification by, by bile. And so then those are taken into the intestine and these these micelles can then sort of uh, come into the brush border, and then these SRB1, CD36, and NPC1L1 possibly uh, can then start taking those into the into the cell. And I'm actually going to splice in uh, part of a video that you can actually find on YouTube, and I'll have the full video linked to on YouTube down below. I'm going to splice that in uh, into this video of actually showing the uptake of, well, it's actually in HDL. Uh, but anyway, I won't go into that here since I'll splice that in. So here we have a low-density lipoprotein. So uh, or a high-density lipoprotein, rather. So it's lipid-poor, meaning that the lipid-to-protein ratio is very low. So here we see a lipoprotein binding onto the SRB1 and then depositing its 
fats and cholesterols and so forth into the cell. And it would be a very similar uh, mechanism for the micelles in the, the intestine. So the micelle would bind onto the SRB1 and then deposit its, its fatty acids and uh, fat-soluble vitamins into the cell, in the, into the enterocyte in the, uh, in the intestine. But anyway, that is kind of the take-home message here. Uh, then, like I said, we have the transport through the cell uh, down to here. So this ABCA1 uh, can then actually put these into chylomicrons here. And so, uh, and so yeah, that is the absorption of the fat-soluble vitamins. Uh, in the next several videos, I'll be going through the absorption of the water soluble vitamins so vitamin c and then the b vitamins uh, so i will see you in those videos